Hey guys and welcome to subtopic 4.3 on soil. This is going to be part one of a set of videos for this subtopic. We're going to cover this science understanding first. Plants require nutrients which they obtain from the soil. We need to explain why plants need soil nutrients in soluble form. Secondly, soil productivity is related to the availability of plant nutrients which need to be replenished naturally or by the addition of fertilizers. The first important point to note is that plants obtain nutrients from the soil moisture. We can see a magnified view of some uh, roots of a plant here and what we can see is that these root hair cells which protrude out essentially take in nutrients through this water which we call the soil moisture or the soil solution. In order for plants to obtain nutrients from this soil moisture or soil water these nutrients must be water soluble. Soil productivity is the term we use to describe the capacity of soil to support plant growth. Soils are important to discuss because they essentially help control and regulate the ability for these plants to take in nutrients from the soil water because there's going to be this exchange process that takes place between the soil particles and the soil water. This process would be seen as a natural process, however we can look at other I guess non-natural processes like the addition of fertilizers that can further replenish the soil of nutrients. This is a good tie into the next science understanding. Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium are major nutrients that plants require from the soil. You'll need to be able to explain how natural processes including lightning, nitrogen fixing bacteria and decay replenish soil nitrogen as well as explain why fertilizers are required to improve the productivity of some soils. What we know is that nitrogen is very abundant in our atmosphere. It makes up approximately 78% of the gas particles in air. And it's this nitrogen that needs to be made available in a way for plants to, to use it essentially and to allow for them to grow. The process of converting nitrogen gas in the air to a form that's suitable for plants to take up is called nitrogen fixation. And this can occur through various natural processes. The first is through high energy processes like lightning, but it can include um, man-made processes like the harbour process, and another natural process would be looking at fixation by bacteria. We're going to consider the natural processes in this video. Nitrogen gas is an extremely stable molecule. That's because two nitrogen atoms share a very strong triple covalent bond. That means that we need high energy processes like lightning or it could be forest fires that can break this strong triple covalent bond in nitrogen gas. When this occurs, we can get nitrogen essentially undergoing oxidation, meaning it reacts with oxygen and it produces nitric oxide. And this might look familiar from our work back in topic 1 in 1.2 photochemical smog. We know that this can further react with oxygen or in other words it can further oxidize and it can form NO2, which is nitrogen dioxide. Following from this, we know that nitrogen dioxide in the air can react with water, and it can produce nitrate ions, which is dissolved in atmospheric water. This can then reach our soils through rainfall, and this can act to help replenish the soil nitrogen. This is the reaction that we typically look at, so it's the reaction of NO2 with water to produce protons plus nitrate ions, or you can think of it as producing nitric acid, which is HNO3 in solution, as well as another acid, which is called nitrous acid, which is a weaker acid. So we're showing that this one hasn't essentially dissociated, or the proton hasn't dissociated from the NO2. From this diagram here, we're going to consider how atmospheric nitrogen can undergo fixation through the use of bacteria, and in particular nitrogen fixing bacteria, which is then followed by nitrifying bacteria. The other thing that this diagram helps highlight is that when nitrates are provided into the soil and the soil moisture, plants do not just essentially take up or assimilate this nitrate and nitrogen-based compounds within them, that over time we expect there to be some consumption of plants or consumption of animals that consume those plants. There will be other processes that can essentially um, take the nitrogen that they've consumed and return it back into the soil so that it can be reused. To start off, we're going to be talking about nitrogen-fixing bacteria. They can be found 
just within the soil or they can be found in these root nodules which we find in legumes. Essentially what the nitrogen fixing bacteria do is take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into ammonia and or ammonium based compounds. Following that we have nitrifying bacteria which will then take these ammonium uh, based compounds. They'll firstly look at converting it into nitrite ions. From there we have a second family of nitrifying bacteria that will then convert these nitrite ions into nitrate ions which then can be absorbed by plants through the roots. Plants will essentially absorb this nitrate for their own plant growth. However, we know that plants are a source of food for many organisms. So this is how consumers essentially would obtain their source of nitrogen. So they would consume plants and in particular proteins where we find nitrogen based compounds as well as nucleic acids. These consumers will then break them down and convert them to produce their own types of proteins and nucleic acids which will assist in their growth. But we know that certain consumers can be then preyed upon or consumed by others and that's how they would obtain their source of nitrogen. It's important to note that not all of the nitrogen as well as other important elements are going to be essentially broken down and then contribute to the biomass of that particular organism. We know that animals will typically produce waste and the waste itself will contain some of these nitrogen based compounds. However, they don't just get lost from there. So what we have are bacteria that can help uh, allow for the decay and decomposition of this waste product and in doing so it's going to help return this nitrogen back into the soil so that it's ready to be used again. Another point to consider is that organisms eventually will die so plants and animals will undergo death and from this point we would also have bacteria that will help decompose these organisms and help break those compounds down and return these nutrients back into the soil. In particular we're looking at nitrogen returning back into the soil so that it can be reused again. As a final consideration, what we have to also consider is that there is a process to take these uh, available nitrogen compounds for plants and convert them back into atmospheric nitrogen. So we have what we call denitrifying bacteria that will convert nitrates and ammonia and ammonium based compounds back into nitrogen gas. These series of processes essentially show us how nitrogen cycles through these different systems. So far we've looked at natural processes allowing for the cycling of nitrogen, but we know that fertilizers are typically used. And that's because agricultural and farming practices decrease soil productivity of arable land. Fertilizers are therefore used to provide or replenish essential nutrients to nutrient deficient soil and or maximize growth conditions of certain crops. Fertilizers provide soils with many different important nutrients, but the three most important ones are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. We can see over to the left here, nitrogen helps with leaf development and helps make leaves essentially green and, and healthy. Uh, phosphorus helps in the growth and development of roots and potassium is important for disease resistance and root development. From this information we can understand the importance of fertilizers especially in terms of food production. However we know that there are some issues especially looking at over fertilization and so I'll be talking about one of those in the next video. I'll see you guys there.